Grimstroke on the board for them. That is a little bit of sort of extra lockdown now for them to work with as well. So between Grimstroke and Nyx Assassin, this is going to get a little bit scary for that two base side. They've got to be very much aware of where those supports are if they really want to force a larger engagement. Yeah, and of course, when you look at the bins, you look at the picks, of you have to consider is a known looking for a Terra Blade? Are they looking for a Sven? What is the the carry that is really going to sort of pronounce what they want to play? Because when you pick up this Grimstroke, Grimstroke is not known as one of those counters to Gyrocopter. You usually want to see that Illusion carry picked up on the enemy team before you would go for a hero like this. But I do like it versus the Sand King. It's one of those heroes that can really mess up the Sand King where suddenly you can't use your stun. You can't use it just because it is quantified as a uh, a mobility skill so it does really inundate that hero so we might see the sand king uh, end up going off lane just because they want i annihilate on something a little bit more robust i think now jubay is probably looking at jubay's here if jubay isn't going to be on the hoodwink of course uh him and empyrean definitely swap back and forth i think for that hero specifically i think everybody kind of knows how to play that at that much or at this rate and I do like going for the line. That's the other hero that sort of snuck through the pool. Originally, I thought Unknown were possibly going to go for it because Lion is one of the few heroes in the game that does feel pretty fantastic versus Nyx Assassin just because you have the Hex. You have the stun that doesn't do any damage, and it's a little bit more guaranteed than, let's say, a Rubik Lift because I don't think they would uh, necessarily want to pick Rubik on two base tier. But now if you're unknown, you need to pick up your carry, you need to pick up your core matchup, and you need to keep it a little bit ambiguous, I think, if they could, just because even though they don't have last pick, I don't think, aside from the TB, they really have something that could be just your, your mic drop, slam, do whatever you want, and there's a lot of magic birds coming out from the two base side, so... I do want them to sort of go for, I, I don't know if it necessarily has to be a strength hero, but something a little bit tankier, because as of right now, if they do go for that TB, he will just kind of get bursted, or they have to play really carefully around it, because with the Grimstroke, you also say, we're not going to have save in this lineup. Nyx Assassin Grimstroke is not going to be doing you any favors if you do have a hero that's going to be out and in front for most of the game, so they've got to go for something a little bit bursty, a little bit sort of, we're going to go in, we're going to kill you, we're going to get out, reset, so I'm curious what they go for. Okay. All right. I like it. I like it. <laughs> certainly appears, at least at first glance, to sort of solve some of those issues. Two based do have a lot of damage coming out from both the cores and the supports, but your Wraith King's going to have that potential sort of reset uh, with the ult pop. So it feels pretty good. You've got a little bit of synergy as the, uh, as well there, maybe early on with the Wraith King and the Grimstroke with the sort of double stun play. If they want to even try to get a little bit aggressive, don't know how often that's going to be relevant, but it is something to consider. And the Wraith King. If you can find the farm, does do a pretty sizable amount of damage, maybe not quite as much in the way of hitting everyone in the fight the way that the Gyrocopter will, but we have seen what happens when you allow that Wraith King to build himself up a little bit too far. It's just sort of a monstrosity running at you a lot of the time. Yeah, and stylistically, right, the enemy team has a lot of burst damage, so just have two lives. Just make it so that they can't commit everything on you. If they do, everybody else on your team is quite happy. Just means the two based are really going to have to hard focus this Nyx Assassin and this Grimstroke, and that's going to be on Rodeo's job. He's going to need to give these supports the vision and the confidence to sort of stand up in front, because you know that Unknown is going to be doing the exact same thing. They're going to be trying to get into your backlines with this Timbersaw. They're going to get a Blink Dagger eventually on that Wraith King, and it's just going to be who gets whose support first. And if you can take out this hoodwink, if you can take out this lion and all the damage ceases, then you're going to start to struggle to kill this Timbersaw. Then the lineup starts to fall apart on the two base side. So it's really going to be very heavily on Rodeo to just have that positional awareness, have that positional advantage. And then it will get more difficult for Unknown to jump because right now they don't have the best jump. The initiation really is Carapace, Wraith Fire Blast. I would love if they maybe try to go for a tiny. They need something, I think, a little bit more to feel like they've got this game sort of unlocked. A tiny would feel great right now just because, again, Hoodlink Lion, Avatos, pop, move on to the next target. Don't need to be too worried about it. Uh, aside from that, I was going to say, the bands are just on the money, though, from both sides. They both know that both mid laners need to be picked up still, which does make it feel a little bit better for two base, just because even though you don't have first priority, no hero is so obvious that either team would immediately want to steal it. And at the end of the day, the Sand King could end up going mid. We could always see that, especially seeing the Ember Spirit picked up. I and I would be very comfortable on it, but 
I think they'll probably send Rodeo on that Sand King just because Sand King versus Wraith King, even though you don't have the most armor on Sand King by default, it's just Sandstorm Caustic. The skeletons never really become an issue. And I think you have some counterplay there with Lion where maybe you can get a nice cheeky kill on the Grimstroke, but you can at least stop the Wraith King farming a little bit with that hero in that position. But I am struggling to figure out what I and I like want to play because really all of his uh, sort of alma maters are taken out. Oh, I forgot about Puck. All right. It's all always there. It's always there. Nobody bans that hero anymore. Yeah, and the Puck makes it through. Do you want to point out, though, just because we haven't seen it at all today, uh, no Leshrac. It was banned. Believe it or not, that, that is actually allowed. You, you are allowed to make it so that no one can pick Leshrac. And Simply Two Based actually did it, the Mad Lads. So, no Lesh for the first time across now five matches. And honestly, yeah, I think I Annihilate on that puck is, is going to be a pretty solid pickup for them. Obviously, there's a little bit of a concern. That is always the thing with the puck. If you do get caught out by this lockdown, you're pretty much guaranteed to die. But I Annihilate will hopefully be sort of faster on the draw, able to keep himself safe. And if he can... Excuse me, act as that secondary damage dealer and initiator. I think two base are going to be feeling a little confident in their ability to maybe jump in onto that back line. And as you said, really prioritize heroes like the Nyx and the Grimstroke, taking them down right at the start of those engagements. Yeah, and of course, Nyx Assassin versus Puck. We go all the way back in the patch rewind. Originally, no one was brave brave enough to pick Puck into Nyx Assassin because everybody valued that Nyx Assassin as just the best hero in Dota. That was the way everybody looked about it back then. But now, I think Pucks, they feel confident enough where if I can hit the silence on him or maybe I can just ignore him, the Nyx Assassin can't really afford to spend his time in Viz waiting around for a lot of picks. So I think to that respect, if he can just continue to play his game, and we've seen it even in the Arkar series where we had a puck that wasn't doing fantastically, but was still able to just simply get the coil on the Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit feels absolutely terrible versus Puck. You just lose two of your spells. You're really sad. And really with the way that everybody builds Ember Spirit now, you kind of have to build them this way. You're not going to ever be able to get that Flame Guard ever again. Because again, Puck will just always take it off of you. He has two nukes. There's nothing you can do in that sort of counter matchup. So I like that I and I like was able to get a favorable matchup with their last pick. But Unknown, again, they kind of uh, leaned into it, I want to say, on two base, because Puck does not give you a lot more damage when it comes to inevitably killing Wraith King. So we'll have to see how they are able to really accomplish the Wraith King kill, because otherwise they are going to struggle. Again, this Wraith King pick is going to feel really solid. They need to kill him twice. They need to save enough in the tank. And uh, the cliche, it's going to be execution. You need to kill everybody but the Wraith King. Then you need to kill the Wraith King slowly, and then you need to kill him again. So it's definitely going to be a little bit scary in these fights. All right, and that is somewhere that Simply Two Base can maybe lean a little bit more on this particular support duo. The Lion and the Hoodwink sort of bringing a little bit more in the way of damage output to the table than a lot of their sort of other options in that supporting role. I'm not saying save Finger of Death for the Wraith King. If you need it to blow up one of the other heroes, obviously you sort of let it fly, but... Those heroes with their extra lockdown and damage could be sort of the difference, at least maybe in the early and mid game stages. If we get laid into it and you're relying on Hoodwink or Lion to sort of save the day for you, then we have all sorts of other problems to be talking about. But early on, maybe those two can pick up that slack where I Annihilate may not be fully sort of up to task in terms of his damage output. But it's a pretty big if, and that's assuming that two base are going to find those opportunities in the first place. We'll have to see, as you said whether the execution sort of stacks up there so we do get the match underway black soul did go for that first point up in the flame guard but gotta be careful i annihilate isn't going to go directly in to try and burn it just yet he's going to sort of let this lane uh push into him a little bit early on yeah and unfortunately sometimes when you see the level tick up level two on the ember spirit you might be a, a little bit cautious because you are forcing into the wave into the enemy mid laner and then sometimes you get chains and you're getting hit by three heroes but i think both mid laners here are very confident on their abilities and this is going to be a little less farming there's definitely going to be a lot of farming going on that's kind of the reason you pick puck in this situation in addition to the coil but there's going to be a little bit more mechanical skill involved than that previous matchup of uh, bat versus lesh mm -hmm. And meanwhile, over in the bottom lane, Boris, well, 
Farming in between the towers. Things got a little uh, complicated with the equilibrium here, but he is farming away. The Hoodwink was trying to sort of keep those opponents at bay, but you do see Moonlight now sort of rotating over. So he's going to look to be a bit disruptive, but I don't know how much this is going to slow Boris down. He should be just fine here. Moonlight really doesn't have too much to actually threaten the Gyrocopter with. He could hit him up with a stun, but Valky wasn't in a position to follow it up, but he is making his way over. Things are getting very kind of awkward in this lane as they're going to pull the creep wave uh, out once again. But while Moonlight is going for the pull, Valky tried to get aggressive there with the Timber Chain. Good bit of damage onto Imperium, but the second he goes for that maneuver, Imperium hits him up with the Bushwhack. So I'm not sure if they were aware of the fact that he didn't have the Whirling Death, but they weren't really willing to take the chance. Yeah, and that's where we are going to need to see a few more levels before any true aggression is going to come out. And this lane, it's fine. We'll see what Boris ends up going for. We did see uh, versus another melee offlaner, this uh, gyrocopter actually get points in that rocket barrage. But knowing Boris, he's a farming man. He's probably going to uh, wait to skill up to see if there could be a kill opportunity. Or I wouldn't be surprised if he's got two points in stats at this point. He's going to hold it for now, but keeping his options open as he and Empyrean push forward onto Valky. But kill potential here is kind of low. Only one point up in the reactive armor, but... They're going to need quite a few more levels in order to make something happen, but as of right now, Valky's kind of going it alone in this lane. You see that Nyx Assassin stepping into that spawn box, so preventing any further pulls uh, from that two-base side. So this creep wave, it's been pretty far forward throughout the laning stage so far, and there's not a whole lot Empyrean is going to be able to do to immediately sort of fix that. Yeah, and that's where there is a large camp available to you, but this is just the sort of guaranteed levels that Valkyrie's going to get. It's a very similar situation to the previous game where Moonlight can sort of just give Valkyrie soul XP, and once you hit that level 6, that's where this lane does get decently hard for Boris, but he's keeping up with CS. Nobody's really going to be uh, sort of forced out completely farm-wise. They're kind of accepting the fact that everybody's going to get what they want. Supports really matter a lot less in this uh, bottom lane. Yeah. Feels like it's going to be pretty static moving forward, which is why we already see uh, those supports kind of going on the move. Empyrean hanging out in his jungle. You see Moonlight pretty much doing the same thing. Did he actually... Did not get any stacks off. Didn't quite have that timing. And now he's rotating his way mid to try and cover the runes. And... Nope. Black Soul is going to be able to pick up one, but at this point, I and I like, can't really be fully denied from grabbing the other. So, even exchange in that middle lane... Uh, I do believe, yeah, he did get one stack off here, uh, while he was going after the rune, so there's gonna be a little bit more available to him. Meanwhile, up top, stoked. Well, this is a little bit of a strange one. He went in for the burrow, connected on the two. Aredes hits him, though, with the stun from that ink swell. Didn't really have the detection, but now they're in onto Jubei in the line. He's gotta be incredibly careful there. He will throw out the hex as Wasabi was hitting him pretty hard. Only one point up in that mortal strike, but that crit does still hurt even this early on, and Jubei's at least able to back away, but... Quite a bit of damage exchanged there. Neither side... Oh, God. Neither side backing off as Stoke goes in for the burrow again. And Wasabi is still sitting on a full stick, though. So, realistically speaking, I don't know how much they're going to be able to do to him. But at this point, it's really just all about the Sand King trying to find farm for himself. He's doing a pretty damn good job of it so far. 32 last hits. That's actually uh, rather significantly outpacing that Raid King. Yeah, not getting denied either. Getting away with the super greedy Sandstorm build. And it's not even their fault. I think Aredis just doesn't have enough gas in the tank. And unfortunately, I think he's going to go for this pull. But the issue with uh, pulling a stack small camp into the wave is that you are laning versus a Sand King. So even though this Wraith King will be able to take all these last hits underneath the tower, all it takes is a Sandstorm in five seconds time. And then this is all going to be the Sand Kings. And it's going to be up to Aredis to time his, uh, time his stroke of fate pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. Got one. Mm -hmm. Only one. Not quite what he was hoping for. There, 100 mana for a single last hit is stoked. I mean, I, I love the way that Sand King's playing right now. He is looking very sort of big at the moment. He's got the Blink Dagger queued up, so he knows exactly what he wants moving forward to try and keep this sort of high-impact level of play for himself. And he's even getting a little bit of solo experience as the Lion stepped out of lane for a little bit. Rotated mid for just a little while, but now making his way back... And just in time as well, as that Sand King is kind of pushing forward a bit. Wasabi does have to be careful here. He does not have the ult just yet, but it's actually... Oh my god. Uh, it's actually Stoked who's the one in some trouble. He's going to get stunned up repeatedly. The silence came through from Aredis as well, so... 
They bait him in. Jubei was on his way up, but not quite fast enough. The Sand King needed to show maybe just a little bit more patience, but he's too far forward and he does pay pretty significantly as Team Unknown draw first blood. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. I think if he was able to get the stun off, he actually did die to the Phantom Embrace's uh, rend. So there's not much you could do about that. He would have died on the same tick. And it's unfortunate because now on the side lanes, Boris is in a little bit of trouble. Dalqui popped his own level six and got immediately aggressive. And you I already committed though. I Annihilate. Yeah. Okay. Did they have the damage though? This yeah, is gonna this get is, awkward. This is a bit of a they problem. Need oh, Valkui, what? Why did he, how did, he just missed? Okay. That is a bit Boris. of a mistake, <gasps> Boris. He was, a tenth of a second maybe away from finishing that tp but black soul just gave it everything he got jumped in with i think every single remnant that he had and it's just the tiniest little bit of damage that they needed they will find that kill and that really changes everything initially that was looking like a rather sizable mistake from valky giving himself up there but the late rotation in from the ember isn't so late that they can't turn it into a favorable trade and that one just has got a sting for boris he was so close he could just smell the fountain at that point he actually doesn't make it out yeah and uh, he, he had a four stick i think if he sticked he would have been fine but now we're going to start to see the lanes devolve just a little bit he almost has the max level in flat cannon he's gone for that dragon lance on the gyrocopter but this is where Valkyrie is really going to come into his own he really doesn't have a lane opponent anymore which will end up being the sand king but already sort of talked about how the Sand King can't really put up with what the Timbersaw is going to put down, so we're probably going to see a little game of cat and mouse evolve in the bottom lane while everyone else just tries to farm up as much as they can. Hopefully, uh, Boris doesn't die top, but they're sticking a lot of heroes here instead of just trying to claim the bottom tower, so I wonder how they're going to sort of get this Gyro back into a position where he can feel comfortable farming. And he's actually going to try to go for stacks. This is a little okay. early, but... This is going to be a lot of flat cannons. The Lions helping him out. Jubei coming in there with that Earth Spike. But yeah, this this is a two to three flat cannon kind of situation here. So he'll get through it eventually. And it is going to be quite a bit of gold for him. And at this point, this is what he kind of needs. As you said, we don't really see a perfect sort of area for him to safely farm outside of this triangle. So... Desperate times calling for desperate measures, but if Boris can clean it out, that is going to sort of bump up his net worth rather significantly, but it'll take some time. Meanwhile, Stoked running into Valkyrie. Gonna hit him up with the Burrow, but at this point, I don't know if he has the damage. Empyrean's coming over, but no ult on that Hoodwink, and Valkyrie is just gonna walk away, or Timber Chain away. Oh, but they're going three. in again. Yeah, wow, yeah. alright. Yeah, I didn't realize I Annihilate is there until it's too late. He gets hit up by that Dream Coil, and that felt overconfident but over on the other side of the map they could make up for it jubei taking down already boris is in some trouble he's trying to get off that phantom's embrace from him he's gonna live as imperian actually tp'd in got the bushwhack down but now here comes the ember black soul in with that side of fist will be able to find the kill boris goes down and now imperian yeah he's on the run not gonna make it out black soul picks up the double as they'll clean up both of those kills uh, they don't really have a creep wave coming just yet but if they wait a few seconds maybe they could get some damage onto the tier one it's very nearly dead so might as well just go take a swipe at it as Wasabi tries to get in, but the clip is going to get popped. So it'll be delayed, but the tower will still fall and Team Unknown. Very nicely done. A couple of kills. They lose their timber on the other side, but overall, two for one with the tower going their way. Going to push that lead. 2k in their favor just 10 minutes in. Yeah, and that's where I really thought Valkyrie had the good read bottom. Of course, Black Soul, whenever you see the Puck commit coil, that's his sign for I can now get aggressive. And actually, they oh. saw him already commit the... Yeah, it's a good Carapace mid, but they're going to respect him a little bit. Doesn't want to die to uh, what could be coil being up, even though it's a few more seconds. But the only issue is with as much as an Eye Annihilate has been rotating, his farm hasn't really ever ceased, but his rotations have not been really the cleanest especially the one top where he wasn't able to get anything and as soon as he commits that dream coil that is black soul's time to just run at you he can do whatever he wants he doesn't need to worry about pretty much any tps at that point because empyrean has had a very slow game on the hoodwink he's not even level six yet 11 minutes into the game he had to give the tome over to jubei because of all the stacking he's been doing and i think getting these supports online is going to be crucial for two based yeah and we were talking about that being such a big advantage for them, having this sort of duo with all this lockdown and damage at their disposal, but 
they're not built up to the point where they're really willing or capable of making those plays. Although, as I say that, Jubei in there with a the stun into the finger. They take down a Redis right away. They're going to get a Hex in onto the Nyx Assassin nice. as well. And they do manage to blow him up. I Annihilate even snipes the kill out there with the orb. So, you find two picks. It is just the two supports, but you're going to get money into the hands of that puck. That is incredibly important at this moment in time, working his way towards the Witchblade. So, solid pickup. Just when I thought, you know, maybe they would have to slow down a little bit. A nice rotation, the smoke play. Well, I mean, it's 50% them and 50% Team Unknown kind of walking directly into them, but they take advantage of the opportunity. And that's where Stoked needed to do exactly what he just did. He gets a little bit involved. He has that Blink Dagger already, so he's going to be able to make a few more plays. And once these supports do have their level sixes, that's when we might see Black Soul randomly drop a death to a coil, where they have not necessarily the finger, but once the sharpshooter's oh. online, Stoked. Oh, he didn't Did know. not realize yet. So many heroes close by. He is immediately going to get punished for that one. And now Jubei might get caught out as well. He's slowed up by the ink swell. Or excuse me, the stroke of fate, rather. But either way, he's going to be able to catch up to him. And yeah, Jubei gave it a good go. But he is going to be locked down. Four enemy heroes around him. No way out for the lion. And that is so unfortunate. That just all comes off of Stoked not seeing that rotation coming in. They don't have the vision there to even spot it out. So he goes in for what he thinks is just sort of a tap on the shoulder to that timber instead he accidentally initiates into a fight and that's where this is the timber saw timing where you get your hood finished up you come mid you start to put a lot of damage a lot of pressure on this tower and tp in from stoke okay would have been crazy from Redis. yeah that's a bit too far forward now the dream coil as well onto moonlight okay can they actually go for this though they got the sharpshooter coming in into that earth spike and yeah that's gonna net them another kill so team unknown to a certain extent, if you're looking for a silver lining in each of the last couple of fights, they're really only losing those supports, but that felt like a bit of an overextension. Really, Aredis sort of starts it off. You could have just probably focused down the tier 1 tower instead, but I don't know. Their positioning was a little bit awkward. They get punished for it, and not only do they fail to get the tower, they lose their supports, and now Boris closing in on a tower up top, but with Valky TPing in, Jaro doesn't really want to hang out here much longer, but reinforcements are coming. This would still be a tough kill onto the Timber Saw, but maybe once the fingers back up, or maybe they don't even wait that long. They're going right in for it. There's going to be that Burrow Strike. Jubei hits him up with the Earth Spike, but again, without the Finger of Death, they really can't do this. Moonlight's even going to TP in to provide some reinforcement, and they want to turn this one around. Jubei is not in a good spot here. Empyrean tried to get the Bushwhack down, but Valky actually cuts the tree before the Bushwhack can connect, so there's no stun, and Jubei does end up getting taken down. Stoked, at least, is able to sort of hide in the tree line, so... He's not going to get caught out there, but it just felt like they were really trying to force that one when they didn't need to. They could have just waited for the finger, but instead they go in and it all sort of turns against them. And now Moonlight wants it onto Boris. They just barely get him with that Inkswell stun into the Impale. And Boris really has no way out here. His teammates are not arriving in time to save him. So Boris is going to be taken down. And at this stage, uh, two base, I... I don't really know. They all sort of rotate their way over. They didn't want the fight initially, but now they do have a chance to get in onto the Timbersaw. They're going to hex him out. The Finger of Death will be deployed. Valky gets taken down, and now they're in onto the Grimstroke as well. Aredes sticking around a little bit too long. He could throw the ult out here, but it's not really going to help keep him alive, so he'll simply hold it, but that means I Annihilate is in there for the kill. So that looked pretty horrible at the start. Boris getting run down, but you get yourself two or three kills on the back end, and a lot of that gold, once again, Goes over to the puck, 4-0-4 now for I Annihilate, and he's moved into second place in that net worth. And even though you did lose Black Soul in the mid lane, really, it's just, they showed absolutely nothing. I'm surprised Black Soul decided to show in that mid lane. They, I'm assuming he just expected them to make the moves over to Boris, which is exactly what Unknown sort of wanted, but instead they make the counterplay on him. They still do get the Dragocopter at the end of the day, but losing Black Soul like that is not something you want to see, but... I think this mid-tower will finally go down. Yeah, it's going for the deny, but... Oh, That's no. That's a bit costly. Oh, what a throw, though. In onto three. Is that going to be enough to matter, though? The puck's still dropping. Yeah. I Annihilate sticks around for the deny, and while he technically does get it, that is a heavy price to pay. Both I Annihilate and Stoked taken down. It was a good burrow, but it wasn't good enough, and now... Boris has got to clear out. Moonlight's coming in. He's under the cover of that Vendetta. They got the wraparound in from Valky as well. So this is going to get a little bit awkward for them. They're going to try and hold their ground though. Jumping in onto the Nyx Assassin first. They blow him up immediately. But Jubei does get taken down in exchange. And now Boris is completely isolated from any help. He has no TP available. Not even close to a BKB to bail himself out of this. So he is going to get run down. And Team Unknown...
they turn an impressive sort of pick off initially in one section of the map into a series of TPs and rotations top to get further kills. Yeah, and I just don't think they really were completely aware of the speed at which Unknown were rotating over to them. As well as, I think they just need a few more lane wards because I and I, like, the entire reason that kill happened is because he got clipped by the Carapace. And then it's just the game sense of Unknown diving deeper in. And then, unfortunately, Stokes trying to help out just ends up uh, guaranteeing Ionite's death. And again, they're just getting more and more kills. I think Unknown, they keep placing vision as they get these kills, and I think it's leading to a little bit too much. I think two base, they need to claim an area of their own, whereas right now, they're kind of just playing in between Unknown's vision, and that's what makes these reads so easy for them to make, because they keep making these plays, and it keeps working, and it just, it can't. They can't keep getting away with this. It just feels like the game plan for two base is sort of stretched a little bit thin at the moment they don't really seem to have a fantastic grasp of this is our section of the map this is where we're going to operate this is what we're going to hold down for the next sort of five or ten minutes they're just kind of reacting to the moves from team unknown and as we can see based on the kill count and the sort of net worth the reactionary play isn't exactly paying off for them they have fallen behind rather significantly now but it's not a deficit that they can't come back from. Boris can continue to farm here. They can keep on making space for him. Once that Agnum Scepter's picked up, the damage and farming rate takes a rather sizable tick up for him. So only down by about maybe 1, 2,000 at the most. But they need to make the adjustments now. They can't afford to wait much longer. Otherwise, Team Unknown are going to continue to punish them. Yeah, and that's where there are some pretty scary items getting built up as soon as you get that BKB on the Ember Spirit. That's really going to be the catalyst for now Black Soul can go in, he can do whatever he wants, and we're still working on our Aghanim Scepter for Boris. I think it's finally getting delivered on the Courier, but this is just a much slower pace than I think even he himself is really prepared for. At the same time, you look at the Wraith King on the enemy team, and he's become that secondary initiator. He's got Blink Dagger, he's got Armlet. He hasn't gone for the greedy build because, again, he's just a tanky menace. He's just going to continue to run at you, and it completely counters two-base style, where they can't blow these spells on you. They can't use spells on a kill that they're not going to get, so they're just going to watch a lot of space end up going to this Wraith King over to the side of Unknown, but okay. they're trying, but... Dream Call to start it off. Want. There's going to be stoked in with the Burrow. Oh, they no. did manage to get through the first life, but now the rest of the reinforcements have arrived for Team Unknown. Wasabi's back up. I Annihilate gets taken down, and it's all just kind of gone to hell. At this point, just cut your losses, try and fall back, but Boris and Stoked are kind of stuck. Yeah, they're not moving. They could have made a break for it there, but they want to kill Wasabi on the tower. They want to kill the Wraith King right I now. I don't know about this. Oh, Stoked. No. Oh, he blinked past him. Well... He takes down a Redis. The problem is they need the Wraith King. Actually, they've got him locked down. They pin him up the Bushwhack into the Sharpshooter. They've got it. Wasabi's dead. Moonlight's gone as well. And all of a sudden, Team Unknown, they're looking a little bit rough here. The Hex comes Not down. Black Soul gets locked down. There's the Finger into the Burrow Strike. They are absolutely cleaning up here. That should not have gone as well for them as it did. But here we are. Valky taken down. They somehow... That, that shouldn't have happened, E.T. Like... Stoked, completely blinked over Wasabi, uses his epi on, I think, almost exclusively the Grimstroke, but Team Unknown really just kept on grouping up. I Annihilate hits two or three with the Waning Rift, Empyrean does the same with the Bushwhack, so the majority of your damage was elsewhere, but the lockdown was massive, and Team Unknown just kind of walked right into that one. And really just fantastic buyback from I Annihilate. Unfortunately, I think Empyrean... Probably gonna go down here. Yeah, like yeah. You don't want to be here anymore. Just bought back as well as you mentioned, so can't really afford to be taken down as he will simply leave his teammate to die, but Empyrean was a little bit too far forward. I understand trying to go after that tower, but yeah, Glyph came through defensively, and now Team Unknown could really just go for the deny here. They're gonna try and wait this one out. Wait until the last possible second to deny it, which I can appreciate the attempt at added efficiency, but you do run the risk of two base sort of sending anyone in there to just sort of snipe it out. But for the time being, that's not really going to matter all that much. Nobody on the two base side is really crossing over the river right now. Yeah, and that's where we're probably going to see Unknown back off just a little bit, finish their BKBs. The entire reason that they have to play the way they do is because 
they just don't have those items yet. Once they do, really, that is going to be the hard counter where two base have to completely change up their game plan, where, again, the execution needs to get a little bit better, where they can't just dump their spells if they miss anything. You see how crucial or how gutting it feels whenever one member of their five-man squad is down. I can't imagine what it'd be if uh, three or four spells can't be cast on Black Soul. It just feels like after that, the team fights are going to get incredibly difficult, and he does have his BKB now, so we could very well be seeing a smoke up soon here. There's also a blink dagger finish on the Nyx Assassin, and that's where, again, Inalit needs to play so careful, especially if he's going to play in these side lanes. He finished up a blink dagger as well for himself, but that's where there is a limited amount of damage coming out from the two base lineup. They really need, again, to find the back line, find the targets that they can actually kill. Because it's very easy to kill a Timbersaw if he's completely alone, if he doesn't have any teammates. But it's a much different story when you've got this Soulbind, you've got these Carapaces, you've got this Manor Burn Impale. It's just too obnoxious for them to get a clean fight going. Yeah, very much going to be dependent on... Uh, two base basically shooting first. We'll see what kind of initiation they can put together, but it's all going to come down to which team gets the jump on the other as two base currently hanging out in that north side jungle in rather sizable numbers. All five of their heroes actually hanging out in the area as Boris working his way towards that BKB. He's very nearly there. Needs money for one last part. And then after that, maybe freed up to pursue a little bit more in the way of damage. Speaking of damage though, Jubei gonna get blown up in the river wasabi takes him down while that was happening valky though uh pushed out the bottom lane took the tier two tower so team unknown starting to get back into the swing of things here they really kind of messed it up in that last fight but attempting to re-establish control of the map claiming these objectives they're looking for the tier two in the middle lane as well and this is going to open up pretty much the entirety of that south side jungle to them tier ones and twos taken both mid and bot but well if you're two based, you are operating on your opponent's side of the map currently. So that's at least going to mitigate some of those concerns, but not really all of them at the moment. And they have done a good job of making breaks for those side lanes. We actually see a BKB being built up on the Sand King as well. The biggest issue I have right now is nobody has armor on the two base side. If this Wraith King ever gets to touch anyone, they are just straight up dead. There is not much they can do about that. And it's a problem that can only really be solved by just really good play, really good kiting. Because, again, if this guy ever gets a Mortal Strike on you, that's half of everybody's HP pool. The only person who can slightly tank up versus him is that Gyrocopter, who just, again, has slightly more stats than anyone else, not going for the greedy build, has a BKB being delivered right now. Oh, and Moonlight searching. Getting... Little does he know. Dangerously close. But... At that point, yeah, you don't really have anyone in the vicinity to help out, so that would have just been sort of a straight-up initiation alone, and I guess you hope that the Wraith King could blink in in time, but rather than take that risk, they do back themselves away. Moonlight's still sort of standing guard here, though, waiting to see if these supports come out. Jubei and Empyrean, though, not going to take that bait. They're hanging tough, but now Boris has revealed himself. He's going to get jumped in on. There's going to be the Impale to start things off. BKB, though, has been finished off, so Boris... Nice interrupt. Yeah, if he did feel like he was in trouble, he could have popped that, but instead they get the stun down. Moonlight's actually going to be the one taken down. Meanwhile, the Dream Coil is thrown out onto Valky as they get him with the Hex that's going to cancel out the Timber Chain, but they need more. Stoked is trying to get in there, looking for the Burrow, but... Valky's a little bit faster, Empyrean, though, coming in. Bushwhack will connect. I Annihilate, meanwhile, blinking forward. Getting the silence down onto the Grimstroke, so there's not going to be any sort of Soulbind coming out immediately as they do try to push their way in onto the, that Timber Saw, but he's able to reflect a lot of that lockdown. Not able to actually cancel it, but while two base were sort of dealing with the homing missile and such being reflected, Valky takes the time to back away. Oh, and, oh, oh Empyrean just cleaned up. Right back in there. Empyrean gets taken down. Stoked is on the run as well. Burrowing to the low ground. He's still going to get hit up by the Searing Chains. Or, excuse me, the Sleight of Fist, though. So he has to try and make his way out of here. There's no detection for him at the moment, however. But, yeah, he doesn't want to stick around there for much longer. BKB active. That's going to get him back into the base. And it looks like everyone will simply reset in the aftermath of that play. But, I don't know. If you're Team Unknown, that doesn't go terribly. The Timber Saw doesn't actually die. You do end up sort of losing... Uh, your support in the initial fight, but they take down the Hoodwink as well. And they did a really good job, I think, of just baiting, feigning that they were a lot more scared than really they were. Of course, you did almost lose Valkyrie there for just a second, but getting the picks after afterwards just feels pretty nice. Empyrean knows exactly what to do. He's got five sentries. He knows exactly where to get rid of their vision. Big arrow by the puck. 
showing they need to get out these lanes because without the lanes in, then Unknown can just get away with this Roshan more or less for free. And Moonlight's already setting up in the side lanes looking for people pushing out. This is why this hero feels so strong. And if he doesn't pop the smoke, okay, he's going to start popping. They don't want to pop dust though. Uh, while they were waiting, Roshan gets taken, and now they're in. Oh, no. Boris is going to get stunned up. BKB is at the ready if he can pop it. Not going to be using it just yet, though. Trying to hold for as long as possible. They do take down Moonlight. Meanwhile, further to the south, Valky tries to push in. Going to get locked down. Imperian hoping to go in there as well. Keeping Wasabi at bay for a moment, but not quite long enough. That Wraith King is going to continue to push forward. They take down Jubei first. Buyback still coming in. Moonlight back in. Imperian buying back as well as I Annihilate running it down already on the back line. So they've taken out the Grimstroke. Now they want in for more. Stoked is going to rejoin the fight with that Epicenter. Black Soul does not have any mana he is still working with that aegis that he just picked up but his reinforcements are rapidly depleting valky oh, was taken down uh okay i, I kind of thought he had a better plan than that now he's in trouble there's going to be the burrow strike back up to full hp and mana but he never gets the chance to go anywhere there's no remnant he could throw and i'm not even sure if actually he did have one in position he just didn't get the chance to jump to it that is another fight for two base that it feels like could not have been quite that beneficial. Team Unknown just kind of leaving too many openings and they get punished so severely for it. And really, it's just Wasabi chose the wrong targets there. He went so deep to try and kill Jubei, but just ended up getting kited really hard by both supports. He was able to end up killing Empyrean, but very simply, Empyrean buys back. The other three members of Two Base are able to win the fight on their own and they really just ran out of gas. and. I think if Wasabi isn't tanking spells, then his teammates can very easily die. Of course, there isn't an Aghanim Scepter on the puck, but he was able to save his coil for so long that it just felt like they were completely ready to take the fight after the Aegis was popped. And I don't know, that felt incredibly strange. And that was a very, very convincing win. Boris had an Imclaw, so he was definitely popping a few more crits than usual, but now he's got a Chrysalis of his own, and Valky? Immediately removing that silence, but the second he pops, yeah. Once the Lotus Orb's down, I Annihilate says, that's my cue, goes in for the Dream Coil, and Valky gets taken out. All of a sudden, momentum's beginning to shift in a way that, really, you, you would not have anticipated a couple of minutes ago. Team Unknown just really feeling like they kind of let an opportunity slip through their fingers, and now... You take a look at that net worth, two base have just about evened it up here, trailing by over 4,000 previously. Uh, team unknown. No need to panic. Oh, well, okay, maybe they need to panic a little bit. Moonlight caught out in the bottom lane, Jubei and I Annihilate able to bring him down, but those are the kind of plays you don't, or you can't afford to really make. You can reestablish control. You've still got an incredibly farmed Wraith King, but knee-jerk reactions aren't really going to do them a lot of good right now especially as boris continues to build himself up stack oh god stoked meanwhile in onto a radius he's just going to blow him up right away boris is there for the follow-up damage and i think now unknown they really just need to reset they had such a good vision advantage for the first 20 minutes of this game but the ever since the sort of they lost their vision over in the radiant triangle it feels like they really have started to collapse there really hasn't been that same control that same level of uh sort of domination where now they're trying to sort of push out the lanes reset but they're getting picked off in the process like you can't afford to lose your next assassin in the bot lane and then as soon as the grimstroke thinks it's safe you walk up here and they're already set up in the top lane as well you're playing into the hands of two base lineup just a little bit too much and again they were playing at such a deficit for so long that if they get a little bit too much space to farm if they get a few too many items then they're gonna close the gap and without bkb without okay you're getting an ac i, I was gonna say they need something else coming in from this wraith king whether it's more control or it's just making everyone survive versus the dragocopter a little bit longer they need something otherwise this is going to feel like now the Wraith King can't ever initiate on the Gyrocopter. Because if he goes in right now, as he is, he's going to get kited up. He's going to get crit down. They need to start this fight now on a known where they're killing off the supports. They need to do what 2Base started doing in Valkyrie. Okay. He got no stacks. Damn, he's just gone. They absolutely destroy him. Boris gets killed. Now, now they want supports. more Dream Coil in onto 2. They've locked down the supports. As you said, Redis already dead. Moonlight gone as well. And this is... A disaster on a level that far exceeds anything I really could have envisioned here. There were some bad scenarios where Team Unknown could make some mistakes, but this is going, as I said, beyond that point. They're uh, th throwing, really. I mean, I was trying to think of a nicer way to say it, but 
they are losing their grasp on this game exactly at the moment when two based are hitting that big power spike and now you're coming up on 25 on gyro you're coming up on a satanic on the gyrocopter and this is all during a time where roshan isn't an objective it's an objective where maybe unknown similar to the last game can force you to give them a decent fight you can force them to fight you on fair terms but we're getting to a degree where the core matchup is going to heavily favor two base. There's a big reason why they last picked this puck. There's a big reason why they picked the gyro. And of course, they picked the Wraith King into the gyrocopter. But I don't know. It feels so sort of bad at this point. Because once the Satanic is up on Boris, you have so many options at that point where now you have to be so careful with how you engage on the Nyx Assassin, which... I feel like I haven't said the Nyx Assassin has engaged in a very long time. He hasn't been finding those stuns. He's been finding something here and there, but this triple BKB on two based is just kind of ruining Sabi. the game at this point. Silent stuff immediately. He's going to get hexed as well. He's way too far forward there, but the teammates hey, are coming in to help out. Jube is actually going to be the one who's stunned. He's taken down, but Moonlight, he's just Axel. melting. That's a lot of damage coming out from Boris. They take down both of the supports. Wasabi, very low on HP. They're going to burn through the first life, and now Stoked channeling out that epicenter. They're going right back in. There is no help for this Wraith King whatsoever. Again and again, we just keep saying the same thing over and over. Team Unknown... The positioning's wrong, the timing's wrong, the focusing is wrong. Every single fight, there seems to be one aspect that just slips up, and it costs them so much in these fights. That's the supports as well as Wasabi dead, and I'm not really sure at this point if 2Base can get too much out of this. Roshan is still not up, and they're not in a great position to push down any objectives, but at this point, it's really not about objectives afterwards. It's about just how much the, the momentum that has shifted. It's a 10k lead for 2Base at this point. And now oh. Jubei is looking for Valkyrie. Okay. Doesn't get him. Not gonna get much out of that, but Sto Oh no. god, okay, Stoke, oh. hello. He wants in. Valkyrie's oh. gonna try to jump away with the chain and he does make it out, but Stoke does not care. He just keeps on going after that one. That was pretty intimidating. They force Valkyrie back, they take the tower off the back of it, and I said before that fight maybe wasn't gonna get them any objectives, but very much incorrect there. Map control is now becoming a focus and that is going to be a problem if you're Team Unknown, because you need further items. Wasabi did pick up that AC recently, but as we saw in that fight, if he is isolated from his backup, that AC does... basically nothing. Didn't really help him survive when there's five heroes around him, so... They need him to try and catch back up, because he is rather significantly far behind at this point, about seven or 8,000 behind Boris, so... Just feels like Team Unknown... They've given up so much here. They sort of dragged their feet. They weren't able to take that next step forward after building up the initial lead. And they give their opponents too much time, and now they're in some trouble. Moonlight's going to get jumped in on once again. He's just been a punching bag for the vast majority of this game. That is his 10th death of the match. And, and now Wasabi. Oh my goodness, Wasabi. He does have the ult at least, so he is going to be coming back up if he gets taken down. And he will be taken down. Radius, meanwhile, falling further to the east. Wasabi does get off the blink, though. So he is out of this fight, but Black Soul, I don't know if you want to keep on pushing. He's going to be able to take down Empyrean, but he needs to be able to get away from my Annihilate and Boris. And he is jumping pretty rapidly, but he right jumps directly Jubei. into Jubei. Hits him with the Hex. Is there any way out for him? No, he's going to get silenced up here. He doesn't have any remnants left to jump to. Trying to get away, but that Finger of Death drops him low, and he is going to be taken down. Jubei finds the kill, and Tubei's, I mean, they're just executing on a nearly flawless level right now. Very few mistakes being made on their part, while Team Unknown don't seem to have any answers. And now that's an Ags picked up by I Annihilate as well, so the stream coil becomes even harder to deal with. And he's been so patient. He's really been picking and choosing who he has to coil, when he has to coil. He's really been thinking hard about how he has to play his hero in this game. But now you have the Aghanim Scepter. Anyone that you coil next to the Gyrocopter is going to die. Already the supports and Unknown are struggling to find anything. And i i just am not seeing the value in their heroes anymore they're not finding the jumps they're not forcing two base to really react in any way that could hurt them and valkyrie is really struggling on this timber saw i haven't seen him really be the menace anymore it feels like that stopped almost 10 minutes ago where he died once over in the radiant triangle and then he never got his footing back in this game and now there's going to be an aegis on the gyrocopter this game just continues to snowball out of their hands yep and at this point, you see Wasabi, uh, he's queuing up an S and Y, but that's 
That's not the difference making item as oh wasabi. Gonna get himself jumped in on a radius, has to try and help him out. He will hit his teammate up with the ink swell, but they're still gonna get out the hex. Wasabi though still making his way out of this. Aradis though will be taken down, and while well, the Raid King may not be getting away after all, they're gonna burn through that first life. The reincarnation will bring it back up, but Stoked is in there with the immediate burrow strike into the damage. Yeah, Wasabi. He's gonna try, but there's gonna be the homing missile to lock him down. Wasabi falls, Boris gets the kill. Meanwhile, back in the other section of the fight, Valky uh hanging on for as long as he can, but he's almost completely out of mana. And the finger of death from Jubei is going to finish him off. Had to wait for that Lotus to wear off, but once it does, Valky gets taken down, and there's really sort of the perfect example, ET, of what you were just mentioning. Valky what impact did he have there? He jumps into the middle of the fight, but they completely ignore him. The damage dealers for two based are directly in onto the Grimstroke, onto the Wraith King, and they just leave the timber behind. And it's just, he's no longer the menace. He lost his lead. We're at a stage of the game now where even Black Soul is going to be a target because you have that Aghanim Scepter already complete on the puck. And of course, you're not going to GG out when you're about to be eliminated unless it really feels hopeless. But they really, truthfully, have one more fight left in them. If they can't win this next fight, I think we've finally hit critical mass. We almost hit critical mass uh, 20 or 10 minutes ago. And now, it just more pickoffs. Moonlight just keeps on getting picked off in the side lanes when... I feel like that's not even his job. He's a Nyx assassin. He's not your Mirana. He's not Alina. He's not going to push in these waves very effectively in the first place. And I think we might just be seeing the G's dropped here. It honestly feels like too much at this point. Yeah, they do have the strength to give it one last go, though. Wasabi's back up. Got some buybacks available, although at this point I think they might just wait for the Timber Saw to come back up naturally. But they could try one last fight. But as you were saying before, if they lose that fight, it's pretty much done. So... We'll see if they can do it. Buyback from Moonlight gets them in. Tier 3 tower, though, has been taken down. So if they're going to go, they've got to go pretty soon. As they do make the jump in onto Boris. Falky's looking for the damage. They hit him up with the impale as well. So this gyrocopter on the front line. Already losing a lot of his HP, but they're stoked in on that back line. Hitting him up with the burrow strike onto two. Valky's dropped low, already falling back. While Wasabi is just left there to sort of hold the bag. He'll be taken down once. And as soon as he comes back up, he's just going to get murdered again. There's nothing for this Wraith King to do. Black Soul, meanwhile, had already been taken down. He bought back, but at this point... Yeah, buyback for what? The GG will be dropped. There's nothing more they know they can do. And two based, able to pull it out. Really didn't feel like they were going to have the opportunity for quite a lot of the early stages of those games, or this game rather, but Team Unknown give them that opportunity. They give an inch and two base take a mile. Yeah, precisely. And even at the end there, you saw Black Soul was really 1v4ing. He was trying to give the space. He was trying to get in that back line. And then immediately you get coiled. It's an Ags coil. The counter has been met. Uh, a Really a lead that you had for the majority of the game. Of course, you look at the KDAs on the enemy team and Cores didn't really die that much, especially the Puck and the Sand King. But it feels like you had such a long time to win your matchup where you had the advantage, where you had such a big lead. And I think it was just one or two instances where they decided to take a team fight a little bit too slowly. They decided to get ahead of their Wraith King or the Wraith King decides that I need to kill this hero. And then he just gets completely kited or he gets baited by buybacks. I think two based had two incredible buybacks that really swapped the game on its head. You had the one sick puck buyback bottom and then you had the buyback by Empyrean top where suddenly the Wraith King is kited. The rest of Unknown is dying. They lose the Aegis. They lose all the speed under their wings. And I think Unknown, they just felt... A sort of confused after that point i think valkyrie specifically he just did not find another way into that game same with moonlight i felt like both of them and that's your playmaker because you don't have very many stuns your nyx assassin is your stun wasabi is not fire blasting someone they need to be carapace they need to be impaled and i just felt like everything in the unknown game plan sort of just crumbled it just fell apart after they lost that first aegis and two base they picked up speed so quickly and it's just kind of what the gyro does you get two items then suddenly you have to be afraid to fight him i think they really underestimated the gyro versus wraith king lineup i really think while the the wraith king it feels good they've got all nukes they're all going to use their spells on you or they're going to be afraid to use their spells on you because they can't kill you after the fact that just ended up not being a factor because they gave away that net worth lead so easily it's just really two based had some fantastic plays to call this one back yeah uh huge buybacks as you mentioned turning around a couple of fights team unknown compounding that with maybe almost stubbornness to a certain extent pushing into some fights that maybe they shouldn't have taken and to be honest, now I feel kind of bad. Uh, during the draft, we mentioned once they picked up that Timbersaw in Phase 1, 
talking about Valky, how he so rarely has a bad game. He's never really the weakest link. And then this happens. 2-8-10, and 10, the final stat line for him. A match where he very, very quickly sort of dropped off in terms of that effectiveness. So might have cursed him just that little bit. But there were issues on the Team Unknown side across the board. Really can't lay it all at the feet of one player in particular. While simply two-based, I mean... It's cliched because it's true, right? It comes down to the execution, and two base absolutely out-executed their opponents, especially in the second half of that game. Yeah, definitely. And then they just hit item timing after item timing after item timing. They were working with so little. They were working with uh, half the levels on Team Unknown on their supports, and then a BKB and a Blink Dagger on Sand King, and a Witchblade and a Blink Dagger on Puck. And they made it work somehow. It's just the two base magic. Yeah, very sort of budget kind of early game for them but as you said they pull it out they weather that storm team unknown don't take advantage of opportunities and this is what happens so simply two base take the series 2-0 they advance to the lower bracket final they will face off against infamous tomorrow afternoon uh for a spot in the main event meanwhile for team unknown unfortunately their run does come to an end they are now eliminated with this loss so there will be more action tomorrow afternoon. We have the lower bracket finals from both Group 1 and 2, in addition to the third place match that will be going on as well, due to the fact that uh, one of the invited teams did drop out. So there's an extra solid available. Third place teams uh, will be playing for that spot uh, tomorrow afternoon. But for now, it is two series done and dusted. Both of them in the books. We are done for the day, E.T., any closing remarks, statements, shoutouts, etc. that you want to get to before we hop off? Uh, just watch tomorrow, guys. Team, team. We got to see it. You got to see it. Team, team versus no ping. Well, the, the, the land winners, or land winners, the land qualifiers, no ping, the team that everybody had to win DPC SA, beat it out versus team, team, or is IX Mike going to pull something out from under his hat? It's... That, that's what I'm waiting for tomorrow. I, I've got answers, or I've got questions for myself. So make sure to tune in. Yeah, going to be high-stakes stuff for all those teams tomorrow. Their last opportunities to claim those spots uh, for the main event and continue building themselves up here in this sort of post-season, pre-TI kind of period that we find ourselves in. So that will be that. That action's going down tomorrow. I believe it's the same start time once again, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So come stop by, check out some more North and South American Dota. For the time being, though, uh, that is E.T. and I hanging up the mic. We're going to be stepping away. So thank you all for watching, and we will see you all tomorrow for some more action, and then group stage coming up just a bit after that. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your night, and we'll see you later.